tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Let's get started with animation. Hello, Bifrostcraft is a module in Maya where you can do visual programming. Sounds fancy, is very poorly documented and I want to show you, I'm not an expert, I want to show you one interesting note. It's supposed to be only for diagnostic reasons, but uh, I use it for aesthetic reasons, as you might have just guessed. Okay, we create an object and uh, I go to polygon modeling and create this plane and I make it a little bit sim simpler so I click on in the attribute editor the poly disk and I reduce the subdivisions to say 2. Now I have a simple very simple disk and now I go to the Bifrost Graph window and I find it under Windows Bifrost Graph editor. If it's not there in your case, go to Settings Preferences, use the Plugin Manager and type in Bifrost and load that module. It's built in Maya anyway. I'm currently working on doing this tutorial in Maya 2020.4, the student version of course. It doesn't matter because the uh, more recent versions of Maya didn't change anything here. So the Bifrost Graph Editor is what we need and we have three options and we just create a new graph. Like in most, almost all cases, we don't need that input, so we delete it and we middle mouse drag the poly disk from the outliner, not from the scene, it doesn't work from the scene, uh, from the outliner into this field here. Now it lands here, it doesn't do anything. We can connect this blue output to the input of the output and nothing would happen other than we see the same disk shape again, twice so to say. This uh, doesn't do anything interesting. But uh, I talked about arrows and here you see my recent uh, things I did. I create arrow strands. If you don't have this, obviously you don't, um, you just type in arrows or arrow and you have only a single option, uh, option which is called create arrow strands. That's what we want to do. This node, when we click it, we see arrowhead size and a stem width ratio. So this is about the size of the arrowhead and this is about the size of the stem. What we cannot do is connect the mesh to the start positions, for example, where the arrows are supposed to start. Because this is blue and this one uh, is an object node and uh, this is a math float 3 node. That means it's a vector. Uh, what we need here, and you need to know this, uh, is get point positions. We want to get the point positions of this shape. Not many points, maybe 12 or so, and we want to get the positions from our disk shape. So we press the tab key again and we get the point position. You can abbreviate this by GPP, get point position, and then you have the option between get particle solver properties or get point position. We want to get the point position and now you see blue blue the input of the get point position node one's geometry and we connect the mesh here and here you have a green output and we can output this to the start positions. No error messages we're just fine here and we're using the create arrow strands. Now what do we see here? Nothing has changed because we haven't connected it to the output strands go out into the output and now you see arrows here. I minimize this 
The arrows point from the vertices of our object to the center of the scene. And when we move the disk up, for example, you see that the arrows point into the into the center of the scene. When we move the arrows around, they change in color. That's a thing which is built into this arrow node. The arrowhead size. When we change this to 1, you get huge arrows. They're so huge that we don't see our disk anymore. So let's move the disk up. So these are the arrows we get. So much too big for our purpose. So 0 0.1 was just fine. The, they point to the center. And the stem is its the same with the stem. 0 0.5 makes the stems much thicker. Let's go back to 0 0.1. If you have, want to have a special value for this, for the arrowhead size, you need to create an input. And uh, I'll do this briefly. Input um, a value. And this value node has, well, a value here, which is currently 0. And when we uh, move this, uh, connect this to the arrowhead size, we see the arrows disappear because it has the value 0. So with this 0 0.1 we have the same size as before but now we control it with this node where you could put in a random node uh, etc. So this is just a value and nothing else. In this case we don't need it because we have this option here anyway. Now it's overridden by the value node. Okay, the more interesting things which you've just seen at the beginning of this tutorial is this. Um, we create a second object and that second object can be the uh, same thing as before maybe and we won't reduce this in this case just to show you how this works. And now, again, in the Bifrost graph, we middle mouse drag the new disk, so disk number two, into this field. Of course, it has no connection so far. That's why we tap, and we want to get the point positions again, GPP. So we have a second get point position node. We connect our second disk. And now what we'll do is we connect the point position to the end position. That means the arrows will start at the first disk, this one, and it will go to the second one. And not to the center of the scene, but to the uh, vertices of the second one. And when we do this, we see exactly what I was just talking about. And again, the change of color when you animate this. And that's what I did in the animations which you've seen at the beginning and one of them you'll see at the end again. Now finally something about rendering. I thought the Arnold Skydome light is just fine and when I render it it takes a while the first time it renders, um, when uh, Arnold renders a Bifrost graph scene, it always seems to take uh, a little bit of time, but then it goes faster. And uh, I think this is quite sobering. I don't like this very much. So what I'll do is I delete that dome and um, I create, under create, a point light. And the point light can sit somewhere here. I render it in the viewport and I deactivate the grid and now it looks much more interesting.
So to wrap this up, we need one single node, create arrow strands in order to create the arrows. But we need to feed in start and end positions to get interesting arrows, and that's being done by get point position nodes. We need two of them with two different kinds of geometry. And if you want to have a clean layout, press L for layout. Nice one. Have a nice day. Bye bye. I trust craft. I trust craft.